think I'm uniquely qualified to introduce the host of Cat Chat, seeing as we've been um, married for the last 33 and a half years-ish. Um, so, and we've been through a lot of cats together. As a matter of fact, I've really never known her without a cat, um, except for a um, couple months when I first enlisted in the Army. We got married, went out to Kansas, uh, rented an apartment, and the landlord said, no pets. And we warmed out. <laughs> Wendy has a philosophy that cats are like potato chips. You can't just have one, right? You have one, you need more. Um, and I'll tell you, she's probably forgotten more about cats than uh, most people ever know. And that's one of the reasons, I think, that she started the whole uh, Cat Chat show in the first place. Because a lot of people were asking the same questions over and over again. You know, what do I do about this? Or what kind of litter do I use? Or how do I trim nails? Or how do I do this? And she just decided that it would be best if she could create some kind of a, uh, a show or a venue or something so that she can continually um, have that information available uh, to the public. And Wendy and I will be out in town uh, periodically and, and occasionally somebody will recognize her from the show. And uh, the funniest part was we were, we were down in uh, Amish country. We were at Mary Yoder's Kitchen. Wendy and I were having lunch together. And there were a couple ladies that were having lunch uh, the next table over. And every once in a while I'd notice them looking and pointing. Well, Wendy had to get up, she went to the ladies' room. And during that time period, uh, one of the ladies came over and said, is that Wendy from Cat Chat? I mean, here we are, right? On the middle of nowhere in uh, Yoderville, right? And uh, <laughs> no knock on our uh, Amish friends. But anyway, um, these people had, had recognized her. And they, um, they said, do you think she would mind if, if we talked to her a little bit or introduced ourselves? And I said, my gosh, she would love that. And actually, if you ever see Wendy out and about, and you know, she, she loves to talk to people. She's very passionate about cats, if you haven't picked that up by now. Right? So I, I have the saying too, uh, all the incredible things that, uh, that my wife has done over the years. Uh, I say, I may be biased, but it doesn't mean I'm wrong. <laughs> so um, without further ado, let me introduce you to the host of Cat Chat. Uh, again, after tens of thousands of spays and neuters, thousands of cats finding um, forever homes, and now a hundred shows. who are my friends and family, this is his mom right here. Um, so um, this would not, everything that I've ever done would not be here because, unless it was for Mark. Um, all you girls out there, anybody that watches the 100th show on TV, I want you to pick a guy that will let you live out your dream. And then, and he becomes your dream because this guy doesn't really like cats, as he might have mentioned to you. <laughs> We've had them all in our house. We still do. We still have fosters. We have five cats. We have fosters. Last year... We're, we're up to five? Yeah, last year we only had 15 days that we didn't foster. But one of the things that he always says is, um, when people ask, oh, so you both love cats, he says, no, but... I don't love cats, but I love the smile they put on her face. That is good. So thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. My lovely sister. So come on, Robin, have a seat with me on the couch with the the um, the comforter. And for anybody who watches the show out there, okay, a lot of people watch the show. Do you recognize the the comforter? <laughs> so this comforter. It was made because a gal that was watching the show said, your couch really is crappy looking. <laughs> and so she made this comforter. We put it on every show because it's just phenomenal that she would make it for us. It has kitties all over it. But, but you're here, Robin, because we were talking about the show and we wanted to get your perspective of my childhood because I really don't talk about that on the show. And so... Uh, just tell the folks a little bit of my background as a kid and, and our fam, family farm life. I, I usually tend to say no when Wendy wants somebody on the show. Uh, but this is a special occasion, so you know our family is very proud of her. And um, it does stem all the way back from when Wendy was a child. Um, 
our family in general has always had dogs, cats, we had horses, um, and occasional cows and chickens and pigs every once in a while. Um, I had a pet goat. Uh, so we always, you know, we always had animals. Um, but Wendy was the animal lover in the family. And whenever, uh, this was a long time ago, so, you know, typically you didn't spay and neuter your animals. So the females would go out and get pregnant. Well, Wendy always made sure that they were retrieved and had those kittens inside her bedroom closet. Oh. And <laughs> so at all times there was a cat uh, that only wanted Wendy and only cared about Wendy and, um, you know, and none of us ever really knew what we were doing. And, and so, so even from a child, Wendy had this passion with the cats. Um, especially the cats, um, especially one cat in particular where her name was Sugar. She was a calico. Um, my favorite. My Sugar, first and favorite. Yeah, Sugar was the, the classic crazy cat, um, which made Wendy become the crazy cat that she is today. Crazy cat woman. Yeah. So, um, but truly passionate from a uh, very young age, um, as, as I can attest to, because I watched it. Thank so. you, Robin. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Love you. We've had three co-hosts, because I don't like to sit here and talk by myself. And um, so I have always had a co-host. And when we first started out uh, with Armstrong, the, the history is my husband and I taped the show with Bat TV, Brunswick Area Television. And he used to have to edit the shows. It would take like a whole day. And then, um, and then when when Bat Armstrong approached me to do a different kind of show, and our first guest host was Allison Price. So, Allison, are you with us? Come on out, Allison. Hey, Allison. <laughs> I haven't seen Allison in years, so she came out. Hello. Good to see you. Thank you. Have a seat. And then our second co-host was Alex Scott. Come on out, Alex. See, and we, I only get, I obviously, I only have two girls. Again, today you have a seat there if you will. And our current co host that I have is Debbie Andre. So come on out, Debbie. Yeah. Uh, Debbie. That's right. That's right. <laughs> And um, so, guys, I guess this is your spot and your time to say all the dirty on me. <laughs> <laughs> the behind the first, the behind the scenes. So, Allison, what do you want to say? Um, thank you so much for coming out. Yes. I haven't seen you in years. I know. Oh, stop. It's not been that long. Yeah. Um, no, I have nothing dirty to say about Wendy. She's my lifesaver. Anytime a cat shows up at my farm, I'm like, Wendy, <laughs> I'm not going to everybody. I'm not going to make you take it. Just tell me what to do. <laughs> So, uh, no, I just always had so much fun doing the show with you. It was a lot of fun. And yeah. all the experiences, I would get to work in the morning at Armstrong and magically, like, little kittens would just appear, you know, every so often at the door of Armstrong. And yeah. so I think people were correlating, wait, she works at Armstrong. She has connections to the cat lady. I don't want these kittens. And so they'd just be there at the door. But right. We had so much fun so much in fun. those days. How many shows about did we do? Oh, my gosh, I don't like the first four and a half, five years or yeah. something crazy it, like that. It was crazy. And I very much like Mark was never really a cat person. <laughs> and now I magically have all of these cats at my house just like Wendy. So, no, I learned so much. You were a great co-host because Allison, I have to say this about you, Allison. Allison couldn't remember week to week what the colors were. <laughs> and she would always ask me the same questions like it was the first time she ever asked me. And it, was, it made for a great show. Yeah, because I knew nothing. <laughs> So I asked She's the like, perfect no, question. What is that? <laughs> Just like she had never asked it before, and it was great. So. I tried my best. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're a stay-at-home mom. I am. You yes, have your kids. Yes. That's going I'm at home with my kids, and that's we're on great. a farm, and I have a lot of knowledge I've learned from Wendy over the years <laughs> that I now pass on to them. There you go. We have the neon sign at our house. Cats, come live here. Yeah. We don't see it. The cats see it. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Allison. And yes, Alex, yes. you spent a couple years with, with me on the couch. Yes. You know, in this very same yes. the hot seat. Yes. thing. Yes. Yeah. The hot seat. <laughs> and how was that experience for you? Oh, I loved I loved it. I loved every minute of it. I learned so much from you about cat care and um, 
did more than, gosh, I mean, just like you, I didn't know anything apart from having two cats that are kitten crazy cats. Yeah. Um, I, I did not know, I mean, I could scoop a box, but apparently <laughs> I was doing that wrong. I, so I learned, I learned so much. We're going to do that again today. Oh, We're going to learn yeah. how to scoop a box All properly. Right. I know, because yeah. <laughs> everybody says, you just scoop it, and no, right? Yeah, no, that's true. No, you don't just scoop the box. There's yeah. actually different kinds of litter. There's different kinds yeah. of litter and different kinds of ways to do it. Absolutely. So about that All today. the proper techniques. <laughs> there's a system for everything. Absolutely. Do you have a favorite show that you did? Or, oh, goodness. Or, or, oh, so many. I loved all the adoption shows because they were always so fun show, showcasing the different personalities to each cat. and um, I don't know. It, just, it was just a lot of fun, and I enjoyed my time on the right. Crazy Cats. Right, right. And then Debbie, Debbie took the job of being our, our current... Um, I want to say that I just told her that whole story and she came out and took it. That's what the same thing I was going to use. <laughs> that was the plan. Yeah. But, you know, when she was ready to ask me what I, I was going to say, I like to learn and I like the adoptions. <laughs> yeah. That's why I like Debbie on the show. She is a riot. Debbie's a riot. So, so it is fun. Yeah, it is um, fun. I, I learn every day. I learn every day. Day when we have something, I learned something that I didn't know, and I use it for when I'm telling people about their cats that being adopted. And um, I want to say thank you You're from welcome. the bottom of my heart. Yes. You gave us a great place, and we have awesome volunteers, yes. um, just wonderful people that come in from all the way to the top, all the way down to the bottom. I can't say thank you enough. Wendy Murado. Welcome to our first episode of Cat Chat. And we are here to tape our 50th, 50th episode. episode. Oh my goodness, that's I crazy. I can't believe it. <laughs> Coming up on our 100th taping of Cat Chat. We're at my house. We are. Isn't that fun? I always love coming to Wendy's house. <laughs> Why is that? Because it's so comfortable and animal friendly. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and we're happy to be here in this happy to be here. new facility. In our new facility. Yeah. We're not going to show too much. Yeah, I was going to say, we can't tell you where we're at, just yeah. that we're in a new facility. Right, and right. And it's super. Yes. Yeah, isn't it fun here? Why is it so fun? We can get We can get um, we're here today with Dr. Allison Lash, my friend from Animal Medical Center. I'm here today with my good friend, Dr. Amy Moore. We're going to be talking with Dawn Fisher, who is a very good friend of mine and a Kitten Crazy volunteer for quite a few years now. And Andy, our camera gentleman, um, actually is going to walk in with his kitty, True. True story. Yeah, true today. story. This is real. This, this is, is really real. Right this now. is really yeah. happening for Oswald Cobblecat. That's right. Oh, that's a lot of cat chat. <laughs> <laughs> I should know more by now. <laughs> okay. Ticked, ticked, striped, circles. Which is classic. Yes. Okay. Um, you lost me. Spotted. Spotted. Okay. <laughs> no other good reason, but I sure would like to know why I'm using that instead of that or that or that or that or that. <laughs> I scruff with my right hand and I take my left hand, see, just puts them right out. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna cut it. They would cut it like right here. Okay. Put the top back on mm -hmm. and then they would have bedding in here. And that would be so warm. Bedding. Really good. Yeah. It smells really good. Like if we if infuse it. Oh, we can make little wow, kitty that litter, smells kitty really litter good. hand scrubs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna just gonna let her have a second. Ooh, look at that. Look how nice you are. Okay, and then I'm just gonna say, oh what a good girl you are. Uh, so if you are gonna adopt at Christmas, just keep the cat in mind and what the cat's needs are so that they have an easier transition. I'm going to cut a few slats and after I threw some treats in it, you saw this and smell the treats and he went. And he went. <laughs> and he found the heated bed and he was fine with it. And she doesn't care if they climb on her. She doesn't care. She, she knows these guys. She's checking them out. She's like, one's missing. And then we have Nemo and Dory, and don't ask me who's who yet, because we just got them in just two days ago. Yes. This guy is huge, and his name is Felix, and he's awesome, and he likes to kiss. 
Thank you, right on cue. To be uh, around humans at this point. And uh, we don't care. Nom, 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 nom. Right? What? We don't care. Uh, Too bad, so sad. I love you, we. And she loves being out now. Typically, I kiss them all the time, and there's usually red blobs on their faces. And people, what's that red? And everybody knows that from the staff, they said, oh, Wendy must have been in here kissing on them. Oh, look at that face. Smile for the camera. Oh, Smile. Holy. Smile. Come on, smile. Hi. Hi. How this kid is found? Dawn, what are their names? This is Tom and Jerry. Most of the people who watch the show on a regular basis I've know heard. Kiki. Yes. Yeah. I want to introduce you to a new cat of ours. His name is Big Red. And I if love anybody him. has ever watched the show, knows what Wendy likes. Orange kitties. Do my leopard in a tree hold, which usually calms them right down. Leopard in a tree hold, see how he does. A little bit of a catitude is what I call a catitude. One of my sayings is hands are for petting and toys are for playing. And we follow the Wendy rule, which is smother mother. If you hiss, you gotta get a kiss. Hisses get kisses is what I say. Over $1,300. Yes, we did. And uh, this, oh. this was the check that we presented last year. Yes, we did. And it uh, was amazing. So this year it's going to be bigger and better, yep. and uh, we're bound and determined to break that $1,300 goal. And um, so mm -hmm. next year, get in on the action. We do it yes. in January, February. $1,819. That was really? our biggest Thank year you ever. So much. That was our biggest year ever. Come here. This gorgeous quilt that was handmade by Gisela Sanchez. And I wanted to say a special thank you, shout out to Gisela. We love this. We're just thankful that you're here, that thank we were able to adopt a cat and he's home with us, Garfield. Right. And uh, so we're, we're just thankful to be associated with you and for the work you do. To date, we have about 1,400 fully vetted adoptions. And you are the 5,000th adopter. Yay. So yay! Today we're here to celebrate our 10,000th surgery at Quick Fix, Spay New Surgery. And today we are here to honor you as our 10,000th client animal. So since they've opened in July of 2011, today Dozer was their 20,000th surgery. You brought in our 35,000th surgery. So congratulations. It is a situation where someone may have overfed this guy. I'm just saying. He was 26 when he came in. Okay. And we're working with him and low he fat. He lost two food. pounds. He lost two pounds. So he's, but he's 24 pounds. Yeah. He's not eating the best right now. He's nervous. He's upset. He lost his mommy. He lost his home. His name is Bandit. He's declawed. He's declawed. He's a lovely boy. He just will sit right next to you. Oh, you yeah. can pet him all day long. He loves it. Not a mean bone in his body. No. He's just a sweetheart. The people have more pictures mm -hmm. of Bandit and Gracie on their phone from 24 hours than I do of all my animals. <laughs> That's they so wonderful. videos <laughs> overnight. Aww. And they will, he's... He's in great hands. They both are, Gracie yeah. and, and That's him. fantastic. And I told you the story about Bandit a couple oh, days before yeah, I got adopted. Oh yeah, tell the story. Next thing I know, Bandit looks at me. Now this is a cat that's never done this. And Doesn't he was here much. 11 months, months. He didn't move much and he didn't move fast. <laughs> For some reason, he turned and he looked at me, jumped off the chair, and in a run only Bandit could do, <laughs> hustled it like, uh, like there was this mission and jumped up on my lap and laid on, oh, he was at he my feet. I actually had to help him. And when he got there, he laid on my chest. Never does that. Never done that to In anyone. 11 months, didn't ever no. do it. I didn't call him. I didn't ask him to do it. He knew. Something made him do that. And I said, Debbie, he's saying goodbye. No, actually, he was saying thank you for saving him. Because <laughs> if it wasn't somebody like Wendy to have a place like this, who knows what if they've probably put him down or threw him out and he's declawed and he was saying thank you. That's what he said. He was a good boy. I can't look at the camera right now. Oh, she can't look at the camera. Oh. When we're taping the show normally, Deb, right. a lot of these gals are walking around around us. We don't stop. We have things to do. We got cleaning to do before That's we right. open the doors at noon. We usually take the show every other Tuesday at 1130. 
And uh, so these folks, you'll see them all. And then when we're taping the show and we do the adoption segment, we just go, hey, can you guys stop cleaning? And can you, can you grab us some cats? <laughs> and that's how we do it, don't Thank we? You. And give them a list. Who's willing to bring us some it. cats? <laughs> I think we should start with your favorite. Where's Einstein? Einstein. Come on up here. Come on, Chris. Chris is a volunteer. Come on, Chris. Come on around. Come on around here. This is Einstein. So Einstein came into the clinic. Some lady brought him in and in a trap. And if everybody watches the show or if you don't, it doesn't matter. Feral cats, F-E-R-A-L. Feral cats are wild. They're untamed. They were born. First generation house cat that's a friendly cat can have kittens outside. They're completely wild right off the bat. Um, without any uh, touching. And he came in, he was a little iffy, uh, but what happened was his mom, his feral mom, brought him up on someone's porch and because she had food up on the porch. This happens all the time. And so what will happen is a feral mom who says, okay, I can either go out and hunt, and that's going to take a lot of my energy, or I can bring these kittens up on the porch and let them eat out of that bowl. Who wouldn't want to do that? And so these feral cats are very, very opportunistic. Um, and so she brought this little kitten up on this lady's porch, and she just picked up that kitten, and it kind of was a little weird at the time, but this is the product of all these people handling <laughs> or going to a foster home. But he's been on the premises since, and her last name was Ehrenstein, and I thought that sounded a lot like Einstein. So that's his name. And so uh, he's, uh, he was all by himself, and so after our period of two weeks, which we quarantined them for two weeks, make sure they're healthy, no diarrhea, no this or that, get them spayed and neutered and all that, we put him with two surrogate need, siblings. Uh, Lexus. And Lexus and this is, uh, Ferrari. And Ferrari. So where are they? Uh, Ferrari's behind you. you. Okay, so Ferrari, and you're using the leopard in the tree hole. See, Good job, Lucinda. Lucinda. <laughs> So leopard in a tree hold. Here, let me show you how to do a leopard in tree hold. This is Ferrari here. That's Ferrari and I've got Lexus. So Lexus, um, so here we go with Lexus. You take your arm like this, you put their back legs like that, two arms like that, and then when you put your hand out like that and you hold them like that, they go right to sleep, okay? So you can do this with your cats at home, works every single time. Adults, kittens, it doesn't really matter. This is where they feel the safest. Their face is pointing out, and of course, he's just wanting to go. But these are the, the, the surrogate brothers. They are surrogate right? brothers, yes. And they're so precious, aren't they? So, and uh, Einstein is considered a medium-haired black and white. So domestic short hair, I'm gonna give them back to you. Um, domestic short hair is the breed. We all know this. This is what we do at the show. We talk about the show all the time. One of the things that we do at the show all the time is talk about color, talk about a little cat facts. Um, he's a medium hair because some of his hair is short and some of his hair is long. So he's a domestic medium hair, bi color, black and white. And then his siblings over here, oh, he's so cute. He's definitely a short hair guy. And this guy over here is short hair. He's got, he's a little fluff, fluffier, but he's definitely short hair. Look at this guy right here. Can't wait to get to him. Oh my goodness, isn't he cute? And um, so he's going to sleep. See that, he, now, so he got that going on. There you go. And then this is a litter. So we've got how many, five, one, two, three, four, and Dan has five. And who's got the mom, Carta? Mom. Catra, Catra rather. Yeah. She started making kitty paws. Can I have her? Yeah. Thank you. She's like, no babies. No babies. <laughs> like my nice. baby. Yeah, she's, she's awesome a nice mama. mama. And all of these cats just so happen to have come in through the doors of Quick Fix. So what happens a lot of times, people have these cats, they show up, they're on their porch, they're in their barns, somebody doesn't want them, they end up with them, they have nowhere to go, they call Debbie, and, um, and we're packed all the time, we're aren't packed. we, Deb? Yes, we're we are. We're packed all the time. Hi, sweetheart. Um, and this is a buff tabby with white. That's her coloring, and she's sweet. She's got a real beautiful face, which we'll talk about in a second. You want to pet her? Oh, that's great. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, she's going to be like that, are you? Okay, so you just put your hand over their face. They calm right back down. Okay, good girl. And so, um, 
So what was I saying? You were talking okay. about how she came in. <laughs> oh, they oh, yeah. called so me. And they, they all come in through Quick Fix. These yes. all came in through Quick Fix because people then will say, well, it's better if I just get them spayed or neutered and put them back out. And that's what we've been trying to teach. So it's working. Yes. It's working. People are deciding not to just leave them. If you feed them, they're yours. That's what I always say. If you feed them, they're yours. And then taking care of them to the extent of spaying and neutering is essential to keep the population down. And people are really doing a great job of that in Medina County. And we are actually, the, the show doesn't show, but we are actually nearing our 50,000th surgery. So thank you, Medina County and all the surrounding counties. Yeah, super. Thank you. So, <laughs> so she's a little nervous. This is a nervous Nelly. Um, uh, this little kitty right here has a lot of Siamese in her, and you can tell because we have this triangular face right here like that. See that triangular face? You can almost just fit their face right into that. That means they have some Siamese in their background, and they tend to be a little bit of talkers. They also are cats that will be very curious about things a lot of times. They'll get up on your counters. They'll knock things off. Um, they <laughs> like to go high, don't they? And, um, and all of that. So this is a beautiful mama. She's not quite done raising her five kittens named no. after, um, what is it? She-Ra and He-Man. He -Man and, and what was that? Claw, Claw, Claudine, and <laughs> he -Man, Spirit, Claudine. He-Man, He-Man characters. Car so Avenger. that would be my quick fix staff that did that. Yes, it was your quick fix <laughs> staff. <laughs> so these guys are all up for adoption. And we're going to have Tracy come on over, please. Tracy's been with us for 10, ten years. Um, we have collectively, I don't know how many years of experience at Kitten Crazy as volunteers. And I want to thank you all. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank Let's you. give a hand to the to volunteers. All the volunteers that make this happen. So, and then Cindy back here, she does our Facebook. If you ever go on Facebook, don't you just love our Facebook page? That would be mainly yes. Cindy, Cindy, Cindy. She so does. thank you, Cindy. Great. So one other kitty we're going to talk about is this guy right here. So three days ago, I think, three days ago, my buddy came in in a trap. And a lot of times, look, and he's doing feats. I call that feats. Some people call it making bread, <laughs> kneading bread and, and all that. But he's pretty beat up. Um, he, he definitely has had a rough life. And he's very young. He's only about eight months old. And you can see the scratches on his face and just some wounds all over. And when he came in, oh, hi, sweetheart. When he came in a couple days ago, I said, we definitely want to keep this cat. He needs... He needs a, uh, yeah, he needs TLC, but, um, you know, I, I see a cat and I can't stand it. I can't stand knowing that they're going to just put him right back out and he's going to have to live that kind of life when he could live in somebody's bed, like this guy. Here, I'll, t I'll take him for you. Yeah, because he just got neutered. All right. He's a sweetheart. So, so we're just going to lay him on his hip and he'll be all right okay thank you and so um so i you know i saw him and he was in his feral trap and we always do a check out in the lobby because people will put their house cats in feral traps because our feral our feral program is if it's truly a wild cat we're going to spay or neuter it for you for 30 dollars and give it a free rabies shot tip the ear so you know it's done you can put them on back out there and you're done. It's $60 if it's a female house cat. So it's half the price if you put it in a trap. So people started putting their house cats in traps and bringing them in so they could get half the price. They didn't care that we were going to tip their ear. It didn't matter. They wanted to save the $30. So now we go out into the lobby. We got a little smart. We go out into the lobby and I just happened to be there and I said, oh, I'll check this cat out. And Debbie loves it when I call <laughs> over there because I'm like, yeah, I checked the feral and it's not feral. Can we keep it? <laughs> and I always ask permission from Debbie because yes, she, she knows. She permission. She knows. She says, like wait a minute. Calls and what says, do you always Can say? Can I keep the cat? And then you say, wait a minute. Let yeah. me. Yeah, let me check. No, let me my, check with my boss. <laughs> yeah, I have to ask my boss if I can keep this cat that my boss just asked. So, <laughs> But it was a fun game. So. Yeah. 
he is a sweetheart. So he is. He's a sweetheart. Um, so I said, right out in the lobby, I said, that guy's fair, uh, FIV positive. And if you know anything about FIV, it's feline AIDS. And I said, he is a prime candidate for FIV. And it's because of the, all the fighting he's done. That's the main way that feline AIDS is transferred, is through male cats fighting. And um, sure enough, he tested positive for feline AIDS. I knew, I knew it in my heart. I knew that he was going to test positive, but I wanted him to have a good life. And so I called Debbie, and, and, so, and this is not a feral cat. No. <laughs> this is somebody's house cat that either got lost or they dumped. They just didn't want him anymore. Maybe he was born with FIV. Don't know. Maybe they just didn't want him. But FIV in a household of other cats is perfectly fine as long as this cat is not the type of cat that's going to beat up your right. other cats. It's, it would take a deep bite wound for him to transfer this to another cat. And even then, now the research shows that this disease is not transferring hardly ever, if at all, to any, anybody's other cats in the household. So if I... If I wanted six cats, <laughs> Mark, if my husband no. would love me to have six real cats, I would take him home no problem and put him in with my boys. I have five boys, and I'm sure he would do fine. My boys would probably never get it. So he is an adoptable cat. Yes, he was. Uh, there's a lot of rescues that euthanize for FIV and FELV, which is leukemia. Leukemia is a whole yeah, another story. Yeah. But this guy has uh, FIV, and um, we will keep him sequestered from any of our other cats. Mm -hmm. But we have two other cats with FIV already. We actually have one now. We only have one because and we found Maddie. And Maddie. And Maddie is a sweetheart. Her, she, she gave us kittens, gorgeous. I call them ugly kittens. Um, <laughs> and the babies were negative. So that just tells you the babies yep. were negative. She was still positive. She got adopted. She's a long-haired calico. Unfortunately, her owner, who loved her, she was in visiting me on, in May, talking about how much she loved that cat, and unfortunately, she passed on unexpectedly. So the person that was in charge of her estate asked if we would take her back. Of course, you know, this is a situation. We took her back, but now she's in a cage, so if anybody knows who wants a great cat, with FIV. Which I, but she is, she's a sweetheart. And they live long time. longer yeah. sometimes than, than other cats. It just depends. They don't have that, they have not done any research that shows an FIV cat lives less than any other cat. So, um, you know, come and get him. There's no guarantee. Come and get him. You he's, can, he's your lap yeah. cat. He, he's just an angel. He loves you. Open a cage now. He's in a cage now because he's got the waiting period because he's only been there for it but he just yeah. wants to be loved and he oh, lays he on his side and yeah. he doesn't care what you do we put him in a bigger cage he's happy now but yeah yeah, yeah he's yeah. a good boy isn't he great guys isn't he worth it he's worth every ounce of all the work we do right guys yes right well thank you so much if you want to put the kitties back you can um and thank you give these guys a hand please they, they are phenomenal So we're going to learn how to use litter. Does everybody feel like you already know how to use litter? Yes. yes. Well, the volunteers do because <laughs> we've gone over it many times. Not so. all the time. Not all the time. <laughs> so one of the things I, I like to show new volunteers right away is how to use litter properly and the type of litter and how to use it and to conserve it and why you're using it. So we have, a, we have a couple of sayings, and I didn't put them on. The next segment is my Wendyisms, but uh, one of the things I always say is clay in cages. Clay in cages, not scoopable in cages. It's clay in cages because, uh, because we are about to see. Tracy, what happened to your water bottle? I got it right here. Oh, I'm sorry. righty. I moved okay. it. Okay, this is our fake cat going in the litter box thing. So screw it off. Thank you, because I can't work a water bottle. Okay, so, so uh, we have in this little box here, we have some clay litter. Okay, you see, and even I even put a little bit too much in here, actually. Right. So you see a very nominal amount. It's really a dusting when you use clay litter. Okay, so, and there's a reason for that. When you use scoopable litter, 
it's pretty full and it actually probably should be up a little higher. And so therefore, when you use scoopable litter, you want to be up high. And Andy asked us to go fast, so I'm just going to give you an example of what this is like. So we have a cat. He's in the litter box. We have another cat. He's in that litter box. Oh, that's a lot of pee. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so the goal for scoopable litter is it for, for it to not touch the bottom. You've got to not allow it to touch the bottom. Once it touches the bottom of the box, it turns the mud. So as long as it doesn't touch the bottom and you scoop it out, you've got that whole thing and you've got a fresh, clean litter box. On this, if you load this up, you've got to dig down in there and you'll filter all that urine in, up and through the clay litter. And you don't want that. So the thing that you do when it's like this is you go like this and you go like that. And now you see it's stuck to the bottom. You want it to stick to the bottom of clay litter. And then you get one of these little guys, and they're a buck at the dollar store. And you take this part, and you just scoop the pee out this way, and you redo that, and you've got a clean litter box. And this little bit of litter, you can see, goes far, OK? So this is how we teach our uh, volunteers and staff at Quick Fix how to make litter go really, really far. This is not your best way to keep odors down. But it is a way to keep your dollars down when you have a cat. Uh, and this one then, as it goes down, you want to keep adding to the box and keep adding to the box until you'll get to the point yeah. where you go, time to clean the yeah. whole thing. So, but that's how you do litter. These are kind of like my top 10, like the David Letterman top 10. OK, so we're going to start at the bottom. My 10th ism is you don't know what you don't know. And in rescue, you start out, you don't know anything. Let me tell you, you don't know anything. And you just get started, and you start to learn a lot of times the wrong way. So I always tell people, you, just, you don't know what you don't know, and that's OK. So be willing to learn. OK, number nine, good eyes, good cat, bad eyes, bad cat. And that doesn't mean this, OK? <laughs> That doesn't mean that they're blind or anything. It just means I'm looking for clarity in the eyes for their health. I want to see nice, bright, clear eyes. I don't want to see anything running, because if they have good eyes, that means they're a healthy cat. If I see runny eyes, um, winky eyes, they have this, this third eyelid that comes up from the bottom sometimes, and you'll think that there's a big problem. That's just kind of indicator of sickness. So when, we, when I say good eyes, good cat, that's what I mean. Number eight, good coat, good cat. Same thing, bad coat, bad cat. So I can tell you that when I was sitting on the couch just a little bit earlier and I was feeling that those kittens in that cage over there, their coat is very rough. And because it's very rough, I'm going to do a little bit more investigating on the background of those cats, whether they have diarrhea, whether they're eating well, because something's not quite right with those cats. I can tell you right now, because when I touch them, and those people, those volunteers that were holding them may know, know, have noticed that their coats are rough. They're very, very dry. And that's an indicator that we need to check them out. Could just be that they've had worms, and we got rid of a lot of parasites, and now they, they kind of tank before they go back up. They look good, but their coat is telling me something. So. And everybody else was pretty good. OK, so number seven is different environment, different cat. So we have seen over and over and over how a cat will behave a certain way at kitten crazy, and then they'll go to a foster home and behave completely different, and then go to their permanent home and behave completely different than those two places. So a lot of times, we can tell you about the cat and how they behave at our place, but that doesn't mean that they're going to go home and behave the same way, because it's all about the different factors. We've had really, really great cats go home and just tear people apart, because they don't want to be there. They're not comfortable there. They're just completely a different cat. And they get to return, and we want them returned, because that's not the home that they should be in. So different environment, different cat. OK, six, you can't rationalize with an irrational person. Enough said. Number five, desperate people do desperate things. In rescue, 
really great people with really great intentions do desperate things. So a lot of times we encounter people out in the public who are very great people. They don't have a lot of money. They are feeding these cats. One or two show up. Pretty soon those cats become healthy because they're being fed. They have a water source. They have uh, all this good nutrition and, and it makes them prolific, which means they're breeding and breeding. Now all of a sudden those two cats turn into 10 and those cats rapidly turn into 30. And now they're in trouble because they can't afford to feed themselves, let alone 30 cats. And then they call the rescues and then the rescues say, we're full. Right, Deb? That's right. We're full. We are always full. We're all, all shelters stay at full capacity because when we send one out, we bring one in. We send 10 out, we bring 10 in. And we are still getting requests to take in 150 to 200 cats weekly, still, weekly. And they're not repeat callers. They're, they're just no. people who have these cats that we cannot help. So these people then become desperate people who will then do desperate things. And that's why I made this saying, desperate people do desperate things. Because we have to treat people with respect, even though they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing. Maybe even illegal, because the law now is that if you abandon an animal, you could go to jail. If you, if you take an animal and you put it in a carrier like somebody did recently in Brunswick and left it by the dumpster and there were kittens inside and all, that is in now illegal. So um, it's hard because we want to help people, but we can't only just help the desperate people. We want to help everybody. So that's why I say that. Number four is hands are for petting, toys are for playing. I have said that from day one. So the day I started my rescue, I have, I have taught, especially any kid that would come into my house or my facility, which was only eight by 20 when I got started. 8 by 20, it's half the size of your kid's bedroom. And that's how I got started. And I would do my adoptions out of there. I did 125 adoptions my first six months. And the, the thing I would tell everybody is, hands are for petting, toys are for playing. Never pet, play with your kitten with your hand because it teaches them that your hand is a wildebeest that they must grab onto and bite every time you go to pet it for the rest of its life. And we have lots of cats that come in where we know that they played with their hands. Right, Eclipse for one. Eclipse, you cannot pet Eclipse. She's a great cat, awesome but cat. somebody ruined her. And you, every time you go to pet that cat, she's like, meow, toy. So we always have provided these uh, crocheted little toys on a long string to keep your hand away from the cat when you're playing with them because that's the worst thing you can do for a kitten is teach it that your hands are a toy. So number three, just about the time you think you understand cats, they will likely prove you wrong. So I stand before you today, supposedly the cat lady, and I'll tell you, there are still things that I say on, on camera, and then we go, hmm, maybe we better edit that out. Because <laughs> they just did exactly different. But we don't, we, we usually just air it straight through. Um, so, but cats are, you, are just, so fascinating to me. They're so fascinating to me because of this. Because just about the time you think you know them, they are, they are so multi-dimensional. And I'm not gonna say anything bad about dogs because I have a dog, but you pretty much know what you're gonna get with the dog, right? <laughs> Cats, they're just, they, they're so fascinating to me. Like, like the time I saw a male cat nursing kittens. I never saw such a thing in my life or the time that I saw a spayed female that wanted to be a mom so badly that she started lactating and raised two kittens off of her own milk after being spayed. That's how fascinating these animals are to me. So number two, never rob someone of the joy of giving. In rescue, you never say no to anyone. And Debbie, have we or have we not been the recipient of used full litter boxes. Yes, but we appreciate it. And we, I, from top down, I always say, never rob someone of the joy of giving. You may walk that litter box after they leave straight out to the dumpster, but you never want to rob them of the joy of having thought of us 
and given to us because that is their best or that is something that they thought of. They got in their car and, uh, thank you, thank you. That? They got in their car, they thought of us and, and that's, that's the point. So, and then number one, and this is what I live by, you simply cannot outgive God. You cannot outgive God. I have tried for many years, and every time I try, he just gives more. And so if that's something that I can leave everyone with, give it a try. I'll promise you that the more you try, the more you give of yourself, the more God will bless you and make you more prosperous, I promise you. And that's my isms. So Andy, come that's on right. out from behind the camera for once. Hey, that's hey, right, hey. Andy! <laughs> Andy finally gets to the This is my buddy. That's the best part of doing the show is Andy gives me a hello hug and a goodbye hug. I'm sorry, that's his lovely <laughs> wife right there. I gotta admit it. So Andy, have a seat well, on, the sit on the couch. <laughs> this is my first time I've ever gotten to sit on the couch. And I, first of all, I want to thank everybody for acting like they haven't seen me yet today. Uh, that, was a, that was a great welcome there. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. So Andy, you wanted to, um, I'm sorry, but this is, I'm sitting on it and it is not comfortable. So, <laughs> this thing. All right, let's take it from the top. No. Oh, no. <laughs> we never stop. I'm one take Wendy. That's what that's I'm true. called. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? And that's one of the things I was, I was going to talk about. But just, just going back, you know, I think that we've heard a little bit of the history of how this started, but I, I have to tell you from my perspective that when uh, this show, it was 2010, and uh, I work for Armstrong, I produce all the local programming on Channel 4, and I'm always looking for new shows and new ideas, and we were doing a show, Allison and I were doing a show called adopt -a pals where we would, uh, with the um, Medan County Animal Shelter, and we were featuring the animals and the dogs and, and things that they had there, and we had the idea of doing a little mini tour and going to some of the other animal shelters uh, and visiting them. And we came across uh, Kitten Crazy and Wendy, and so we set up the appointment to go uh, meet with her. At my house. Yeah, and this is when it was at her house. Still at, at my house. Yeah, at the garage. And <laughs> uh, at the, yeah. And we, uh, bye, I, I've sent people away. There you go. I have, uh, <laughs> um, and so we set, set it up and we went out and met with you and we did an interview and, and talked about your uh, facility and what you were doing. And Alice and I both left there and we were talking about, and there's two things that we talked about. And this was after visiting several animal shelters in the county. Uh, and not to say anything bad about any of them because they're all doing great work. But we left there and one was, we would not have known that there was any cats there if we hadn't seen them because you couldn't smell cats. You know that animal shelter smell? You know, there's, you couldn't smell anything. There was not a, a dirty litter box in the place. There wasn't litter on the floor. It j just, it felt like you were at a house, at, at, at someone's home. And then Wendy told us how many cats that she had in the facility, we were shocked. The other thing was, we, all we had to do was turn on the camera and Wendy created a half hour show. And that was, that was pretty much all it took. And so we, uh, I, I think it was shortly after that that Wendy got a hold of us and said, have you thought about doing a cat show? And we said, sure, let's, let's, and I'm always, like you said, you never turn away help. So I said, yeah, let's, let's sit down and meet. At the first meeting, and I don't know if Wendy remembers this or not, but she, we sat down and as typically these meetings go, we talk about ideas and things. Wendy slid across the table a flash drive with the theme song, the artwork, and a uh, script for the first 10 episodes. She had like bullet points of here's, we could do these topics on these shows. I, I did? Was, yes. And I, I looked at Allison and, and I said, well, my job's done. So I just have to show up and start filming the show. So, and it's been, and that's why, honestly, why it's lasted as long as it has, because Wendy has been so instrumental in just when I think that there's, we're running low on ideas or, or there's nothing else we can talk about, there's a whole new series of, of episodes. So, Thank you. Yeah. And we would not be here if it wasn't for Armstrong. So can we just take a second and acknowledge the, the TV show Armstrong. And Andy's commitment to the show. Andy. Yeah. 
<laughs> because, um, because Andy, you've been behind the camera the whole 100. Yeah. Yeah. So how much have you learned? <laughs> a, a lot. And, and my wife, who's sitting in the, the front row, can attest that I'm constantly coming home and going, hey, I learned something else that we can try on our three cats. And uh, <laughs> here's why they're doing that. Yeah. Or, or when the camera's not rolling, they'll go, hey, Wendy, uh, my cat's doing this thing. Can you, you know? Yeah. Uh, but there is, I, I have to be honest, there is a secret to why I keep coming back to do the show. And that is, from the first episode, Wendy has made sure that there was a cup of coffee waiting for me every taping. And that's true. And then she passed the job off to Debbie. Then I said, Debbie, please make sure Andy has that cup of coffee. <laughs> and I show up, and there it is. I, up. I didn't have it today. <laughs> Go figure yeah, it is I don't know. Today. I'm telling you. Absolutely, 100%. It's yes. all about making sure that the people that are helping you are know that you are appreciated. Yeah. And yeah. I, boy, do I appreciate you. Well, we appreciate so, you. Because we've been this, we've had this symbiotic personal relationship where we mm. just get along. Yeah. We have a, you know, a fast track hour <laughs> every couple weeks and we're hello, goodbye, and yep. that's it. And you, you put it in the can, as mm -hmm. I always like to say, yeah. which yeah. I think is lingo, isn't yeah, it real no, lingo? Yeah, that's real, yeah. I say, right oh, now. did that one go in the can? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, yeah. um, and so thank you so very much. The commitment from Armstrong, but really it's your commitment, Andy. And I know you get paid for it and I don't, but. <laughs> <laughs> but no, <laughs> no I mean, even if you didn't get paid for it, I just know that you would be there because you're my truest friend, right? <laughs> I mean, you really are yes. a true, true friend and I thank you so yeah. much. Well, thank you. Yes, so thank much. you. And then <laughs> isn't there some statistics that you wanted to share? Um, was um, there like how many, like we've been doing it for eight years yeah, now. Yeah, the first You can episode, see all the hair colors, yeah. the hairstyles, <laughs> right. weight yeah. gain, weight loss. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the first episode aired in February of 2010. And, and we've been doing, and, and it's always been, it's kind of um, uh, fluctuated how frequent we do the episodes, um, but it's always been consistent. And it is our, our for Medina, uh, the, the Armstrong system here in Medina, it's the longest running show. We have no other show that's even comparable to it. Really? And, uh, and it just keeps going. So I, I, we're just going to keep doing it. We're just going to keep doing yeah. it. As long as people keep watching it and say that right. they're learning, they're yeah. learning something. Yeah. So. And I hear all the time, because we also run the show in Orville. And so I, I, when I'm down in Orville, I hear feedback of people in Orville that enjoy watching it just to see the cats that don't, at, why, the don't own cats and they just like seeing the cats on the show and, and learning things from Wendy. So yeah, it's just, it's been fun. It's great. It has been truly fun. It will continue fun. to be fun. This is my newest friend. Yes, I am your newest friend. We took pictures together today. Yes. So Wendy, I have a question. Um, recently, oh gosh, I don't know how recently, I have lots of cats that I seem to find. And I recently had a cat that um, I was taking to the vet and it wasn't symptomatic, but the vet, the first thing they wanted to do was check for feline leukemia and AIDS. But if they're not symptomatic, is that such an issue? Yes. Yeah, it's a really great thing to check for because feline AIDS and feline leukemia start out, especially the younger they are, um, it'll start out as once, when they're first exposed, it starts out in the bone marrow. And you can't, it's not, it's not out in the body yet. So let's say that, you know, you, you what, how old was your kitty? This cat was a stray, it was probably about between three and five years old. Okay, so three and five years old, was it neutered? Spade. Spade. She mm -hmm. was spade. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the chances of her being positive are greatly reduced because she's spade. Because male cats aren't, you know, mating with her, and that's how they're, it's, it is. But it's always, always a good idea to, to check for leukemia and AIDS. Because, like I said about um, Philip, he has AIDS and he can live a long life. But if on the off chance that they have leukemia, they can give it to all your other cats. And that is kind of a death sentence and a very bad way to go. And so a very virulent virus. So taking that off the table when you get a new cat is to me is one of the most important things to do. Yeah. Another question about vaccines. When you do have the vaccine for feline leukemia, is that good for the life of the animal? That's such a great question. And all, what we can tell you, because I work in a vet clinic right now, but what I can tell you is 
the vaccine is only 80% effective. So it only has an 80% efficacy is what it's called. So 20% of the time, it's not really working. So you can vaccinate your cat against it. Um, it always needs a booster. See, because when a vaccine enters the body for the first time, the body, uh, people are the same, the same as cats. It enters the body and the body does not know what to do with it. So it fights it off with its natural antibodies. It's the second vaccine that hits the body that takes hold in all vaccines except for rabies. Rabies takes hold right away. So you don't need to booster when you hear about kitten booster shots. You have to get so many kitten booster so shots sometimes because mother's milk carries antibodies and those antibodies are kind of like Pac-Man. They're waka, 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 chewing, you know, killing off those vaccines until they've been away from mother so long that the vaccine's actually holding on. So in an adult cat, your FBRCP, which is your annual shot, and your feline leukemia shot need to be boosted. And then from there, it's about exposure. How much exposure is your cat going to have with other cats? What is the risk of your cat getting outside and meeting up with other cats with feline leukemia? So maybe keeping an every other year feline leukemia, which is called FELV, would be what I would do. Okay. Well, thanks yeah. for your answers. Thank sure. you so much. Yes, thank you for asking a question. I have a question. Is, yes. What's the cost of that test at Quick Fix? Oh, that's a great question. So the cost of the combo test is $30, and um, it, we, we pay a great deal of that cost. We want people to test their cats. So that's not, we're not making a lot of money on that test. And FELV, just, we can do just leukemia only for $20, and we know in 10 minutes on both those tests. Then once you get your test, you can then vaccinate if you want to at that point. There is no vaccination. There, there, I'll say this, FIV, there is a vaccination out there for it, but there is no research to show that that is effective whatsoever, so save your money. And besides the fact that they live long lives and, and yeah. it's not really transferable too much. So, And even though a cat may have FIV, like Philip, and he mates with a female, she may get it, but the kittens will outgrow it almost 100% of the time, nearly 100% of the time. We've seen it many, many times. It's with Maddie, her kittens do her not kittens have it. Her kittens did not have it because the natural antibodies of the mother are in the kitten fighting it off. So it's, it's really fascinating. Come on up here, Joe Cleon. Joe Cleon is a renowned Cleveland photographer. And one day I got an email, hey, would you like some help? And I just want to recognize him one more time. He's been on the show. Joe, my very good friend, Joe. I love you. Thank you. I love you, too. I love you, too. And his lovely wife, Nicole, right there. And Joe, Joe has, Joe does a lot of our photography that you'll see on our Facebook page and Pet Finder. And you created this phenomenal backdrop system. It's phenomenal. And so what we do, the point is, and Diane did the baskets out there. Oh, yeah. thank, thank you, you Diane, Diane, for doing those. She spent a lot of time on those. And everybody that had any hand in it that I'm not looking at, not seeing, and, and all that. But what I'm trying to say is it takes a village to do what we do. And so thank you, everybody, and thank you for what you do. You thank are you a phenomenal for what you photographer. So who did you just do last? Uh, food Fighters. Foo Fighters. And did you do Taylor Swift when yes. she was just here? Taylor Swift. Oh, there. So Mike you see Trump. photos out there of Taylor Swift? He probably took them. So thank you and thank you. Have a good night. Thanks for thank coming. Thank you, everybody.